Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by ExcelLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's question comes from Ronald. He asks, how do I change the value in one cell when another cell is modified? I want to add the value of cell 1 to cell 2 every time cell 1 is updated. And not just an equals, not just something simple where you can say, you know, cell A1 equals A2. And then when A1 changes, A2 changes. He wants to literally take cell 1 every time it's updated and change cell 2 to add cell 1's value to whatever's in cell 2. So it's basically a cumulative total without the history. In order to do that, we'll need some VBA programming or a macro. Okay, today's question was posted in the forums by Ronald. And essentially, Ronald is putting together a sheet where he wants to type a value into one cell. And then as that value is changed in the future, it's a number, he wants it to add another value to a different cell. So if he types in 5, then the other cell becomes 5. If he then types in a 10, then the second cell becomes 15. If he types in another 10, then the other cell becomes 25. And I didn't quite understand what he was asking at first, because it seems counterintuitive. You'll lose any history of what was entered in before. So just adding values to another cell is something you can do, you can do with a macro, but I don't know why you'd want to. But he, after going through back and forth, that's exactly what he wants. He wants me to show him how to do that. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to, how to type a value into one cell and have it change the value in a different cell. All right, so here I am in a blank Excel sheet, and I'm going to put over here, let's say B2, let's say new value like that. And our new value will be typed right here into C2. And I'll just make that yellow. Okay, maybe put a box around it. Okay, so the sum of all the values that are entered into C2, one at a time, are going to drop right down here into, let's say, C6. So I'll make that one green. Okay, so as I type a value in here, here's what he wants to see happen. I type a 5 in there, and then a 5 goes in there. All right, now if I come later and type in, let's say, a 3 up here, he wants this to change to 8. And then if you come up here now and type in 10, this one becomes 18. All right, and that's what he's trying to accomplish. Now, this is a pretty specific example for what he wants, for what Ronald's looking for, but this is also something that you could learn to learn how to change values in different cells. Now, I'm going to be covering examples like this in my forthcoming uh, Excel Developer Level 1, which should be out in a couple of weeks here. Now, the first thing you have to do is turn your Developer Toolbar on. All right, this guy. You normally don't see it. I cover how to do this in my last class, Excel Expert Level 11. All right, you can find it on the website. I do cover the Developer Toolbar. In a nutshell, it's under File, and then Options. And then you have to go to Customize Ribbon, and you'll find the Developer Toolbar over here. Check it on. I talk about this in detail in Expert 11. All right, so let me get rid of these values that are in here right now. So what we need to do is we need a macro that runs whenever the current worksheet is changed. Okay, so we're going to go into our Visual Basic Editor right here. And that brings up this guy, the VBA Editor. We'll be talking about this in detail in the upcoming Excel Developer 1 class. Double click on this thing right here that says Sheet 1. That's the currently open sheet. We want to access the Worksheet Change subroutine. All right, so come up here and pick Worksheet from this first list over here on the left. Now this brings in Selection Change. Don't worry about that. We'll talk about that later. But come over here, drop this down, and pick Change. Now we got the Private Sub Worksheet Change. You can actually get rid of the Selection Change. Okay, Worksheet Change fires or runs whenever any cell in your sheet is changed. And the target is what was changed, the range was changed. So just to see what's happening here, type in this message box target dot address. Say so show me that show me the address of what target was changed, what cell was changed. Alright, I'm gonna save this real quick. Yeah, book two is fine. I'm not gonna do much with this. Alright, save it, that's fine. But now come back over here and just change any cell. Put a D in there. Hit Tab. 
and there you go, F4. It tells you what cell was changed. Okay, and if I delete it now, it'll also tell you again that F4 was changed. All right, come back to your editor. So now let's limit this to only notify us when that particular cell is changed. So I'm going to say if target dot address equals, and what is the cell? C2, but it wants it as an absolute. All right, so dollar sign C, dollar sign 2. So if that's the cell that is edited, then pop up. Let's pop up the value, target dot value. And you can, if you hit dot here, you can see a list of all the different things you can get. There's value, and then end of. So there's address, and then there's value. Yeah, this message here says that uh, the following features can't be saved in macro-free workbooks. I just hit save on my on my uh, keyboard, control S. Essentially, in order to save this macro in this workbook for, for use later, we have to save this as an XLSM macro-enabled file, which we'll, we'll, we'll learn all about it in developer one, but basically when we save this, if you want to keep the macros, you got to do that. All right, but we're just we're just testing right now. So now if I come over here, if I change any other cell, nothing happens. But if I click on this one here and put a 3 in there, now you can see it pops up a 3. So now I know how to see if this cell is changed and what the value is. So now all I have to do is just add that to whatever is in C6. So let's go back over here. So now instead of message boxing, the value. I want to add that value to whatever is in C6. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Let's get rid of the message box. And now the way that you change the value of another cell is with the range statement like that. Range, and then inside of quotes, C6, and you don't need to make these absolutes. All right, and he wants to keep adding the value to C6, so it equals range C6 plus. You could say target.value here if you want to or you can put range C2. Either one works fine. Target.value. All right, I'm going to put target.value because if in the future you decide to move this and change that, you don't have to change it in two places. All right, save it. Yeah, I went and saved it as an XLSM to get rid of that error message. I'll show you what I did in a minute, but let's make sure this works first. All right, so come over here, put a 5 in there. Boom, now you got a 5 down here. Now come up here, put a 2 in there, and it added 2 to what was in there, 7. All right, come up here and type in 30. Whoops. I accidentally had to scroll down. My, my bad. 30, <laughs> 30, enter, 37. Okay, and if you keep adding values there, they'll be added down below. Why exactly he wants to do it this way, I'm not sure. But you could, if you wanted to, have these values when you type in like a, a you know, a, a 23 here, have it come over here to like column M and start adding those values in a list down here just to... So you have some kind of a history, some kind of a tracking. I'll cover that in a, in a different lesson. I'm not covering that today. We'll talk about it maybe in Developer 1. But uh, I, I do this with um, with my bank spreadsheet that I have, where I copy my my, my bank sends me a, um, a balance every day in my email. And I just copy the whole thing and paste it into Excel, and it, it parses it all out and puts the stuff in the next available row. I'll teach you that eventually. Um, but it'd be nice to keep some kind of a you know, a history here. You put a 14 in there, you add it to this value, and then, you know, you keep your history over here. But this is how we wanted to do it, so this was the tech help example. So I hope that shows you how to do it. you got to turn your developer toolbar on. you got to do this. All right. And then you have to save this spreadsheet. All right. File save as, because I already saved it. Earlier I saved it as an XLSX, which is just a standard Excel sheet. Um, if you go to File, come down to Save As. Pick XLSM macro enabled over here, and then hit save. All right, yeah, it exists already. Uh, the difference is a normal Excel file that is designed to be shared and sent around, and you know you can send it to your colleagues or put it online. Uh, they're macro safe, so you can't get something uh, malicious. Back in the old days, uh, people used to put macro viruses in Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, and so on. So now, in order to do that, uh, you have to save it as a macro-enabled sheet. So if you download or get sent an email a macro-enabled sheet, Excel knows to warn you and say, hey, there could be a virus in this. Are you sure you want to open it? Only open those from trusted sources, like me. And even when you do open it, it's going to say, I, I, you didn't see it because it was a trusted sheet at my system, but it will say, um, you know, macros have been disabled. Are you sure you want to enable them? And you have to click Enable them. 
But once you get past all that, there's the code for how this works. And we'll talk about all that stuff in Excel Developer 1, coming up very soon. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Look for Excel Developer Level 1 coming soon to my website, and I'm sure you'll see something on YouTube and Facebook and all the other places as well as soon as it's released. It's going to be a proper introduction to Excel VBA, unlike today, which was just a quickie to get you, to get you in the water. Make sure you subscribe to my channel to get notified whenever I release a new video, and make sure you ring the bell and pick all for all notifications. Ronald posted this question in my Excel forum. Be sure to head over to my website and check out the forum there. Of course, if you need help with Excel, you can drop a line to me right there on my tech help page, or you can email me directly. Here's all the fun stuff. My blog, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Shameless advertising. Watch my Excel Level 1 course for free on my website. There's the address right there. It's also on YouTube, but there's a quick link to it. If you like Level 1, Level 2, another entire hour long of videos, is just $1. Okay, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you next time.